Hey y'all, it's Wendy from Village Garden Crafts. Today's inspiration comes from the Magic Kingdom and a little store near the Haunted Mansion called Memento Mori. Now while the store features some fabulous Haunted Mansion merchandise, I located a Tommy Bahama men's shirt that screamed collage to me. So that's the direction I took my card. We're going to do a collage based card using stamps and stencils. So let's get crafting. So here's a look at the actual shirt that I found at Memento Mori's that gave me the inspiration. And here's a look at the card that I created from that inspiration. I'm going to be using some Distress Oxides today in Dusty Concord and Shaded Lilac, along with this fantastic Layered Floral Roses stencil from Lisa Horton Crafts. I really wanted this to stand out, so I decided to go with a much larger card base than I typically do, and I'm using 5 by 7 inch 65 pound Recollections cardstock. As you can tell, I'm not exactly being traditional, so I'm using purple for the leaf part of my rose stencil. I really want the purples to stand out on my card, since that's what I really enjoy. Choose a couple stencils that really speak to you from your own craft stash. They don't have to be florals. They don't have to be these exact same things. Just choose what you love to use. The next stencil I'm using is a Waverly Floral Ornate stencil, and I've chosen to do this one in Wilted Violet Distress Oxide ink. I selected this Heidi Swap set of stamps that are one and a half inch square stamps. Now they're rather just indistinct background noise, little dots, indistinct script writing, uh, a postmark, that type of thing. For this first background stamp, I'm using the little dots and vintage photo ink, and I'm just being random about where I'm placing the stamp. If you find this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, please give me some pixie dust by giving me a thumbs up, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. This next stamp is a little script stamp that I haven't used before. So I just kind of rough up the surface with that little eraser there. And then I'm using Crackling Campfire, I believe, to again, randomly stamp across my background. I'm changing this one up a little and using the postmark stamp and I'm using Distress Oxide in old paper. Again, I want to give it that vintage kind of vibe. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but we're getting there. A quick look through my stencils and I've selected this Tim Holtz kind of cracked stencil and I'm going to use that with some crushed olive distress oxide ink. Crushed olive was just a little too bright for what I was looking for so I 
squish down some vintage photo on my glass mat and add a little water so that I can kind of mix those two colors together and dull them down a bit before I put them on my stencil. At this point in my card, it's all about building that base layer. So I am putting that crackle stencil over top of my stamps as well as my other stencils. And I've selected another stencil. This one is a Tim Holtz stencil that starts with little circles and goes to larger circles and then into diamonds. So I am choosing to use ground espresso to add some depth to my background. Continue using stamps, stencils, ink, whatever you need until you're happy with the base layout. Then using a finger dauber, I'm going to use that vintage photo and I'm gonna run it all along the edge of my card so that I'm creating that added depth. Now I've got a couple of leftover pieces of background material that I made and I'll link the video. Y'all, this was so much fun. This was photo paper and ink and I had an absolute blast. I particularly love this one background that I am going to use for a butterfly. And the die set that I'm using is a Memento die set and it is Build a Butterfly. So I'm using the whole butterfly outline along with its shadow. So I've decided to put my most intricate part of the butterfly over some of the greens and reds. It's, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. I'm going to run it through my Platinum 6 die cutting machine and then use my pokey tool to get out some of those intricate parts of the butterfly wing. Wait till you see the finished product. It is amazing. I have cut an additional solid image because I'm going to place that behind the open intricacy of the butterfly wing. Y'all, this is absolutely stunning. I just can't get over how this photo paper looks. I'm going to use Precision Barely Art Glue and I'm just going to put some down the center of my butterfly because I want the wings to be loose on the card. And the same thing for the top layer. Once I got that beautiful, vibrant butterfly down on my background, I went ahead and went back to my vintage photo and re-inked the edges, but even that wasn't deep enough. So I went ahead and went with the ground espresso and really darkened up those edges. The ground espresso was really the magic on this card. I really wanted those deep, dark edges to kind of give it that vintage vibe. I chosen the sentiment feel better from scrapbook.com and I'm going to die cut that out in a dark green. Continue my purple vibe. I die cut the 
shadow part of the sentiment out in purple and I'm going to use some Distress Oxide along the edges to kind of dirty it up and kind of continue on with the same look that the rest of the card already has. Time to tape down my base layer and then I'm going to pop up my Feel Better Sentiment with some foam tape. I finished this card by using glossy accents on my sentiment and then using pops of color throughout the card. I had so much fun making this Disney inspired collage card made with stamps and stencils tonight. That butterfly is amazing. I absolutely loved making glossy photo paper uh, backgrounds with ink and I will share that video with you at the very end. I also made another card that is very similar, but much more muted that I'm gonna show you. The butterfly on that particular card is made with a shaving cream technique. If you're interested in seeing that technique, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video for that one as well. Uh, I am trying to reach my first 100 subscribers and I would love for you to join me in my community. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and I will see you real soon.